Hello again everyone and welcome back to my channel. In the previous video, we took a look at installing CentOS. I installed it on this Lemur laptop right here. And optionally, CentOS includes a graphical user interface, which you don't have to have. A lot of people, when they run servers, they don't have a GUI at all because they want to keep as many resources available to the underlying hardware as they possibly can. But since we do have that option available, we may as well go over the graphical user interface, which is what I'm going to do in this video, in this part two of my CentOS series. So let's go ahead and dive right in. All right, so here I am logged into the default desktop environment of CentOS. CentOS by default will give you the GNOME desktop environment and by desktop environment or DE, that's just another term us Linux people use for the actual graphical user interface that we happen to be using. There's several different options. GNOME is just one. Now it's beyond the scope of this video to show you the different desktop environments that are available. I have other videos on my channel that'll take care of that. But specific to CentOS, you'll get the GNOME desktop environment by default, which is what you see here. As I mentioned earlier, in most cases, when you run a server, you won't have a desktop environment at all. You want to keep as many system resources available to the applications that you are serving as you possibly can. In this series, we are going to focus more so on servers, which is where CentOS shines, but depending on your use case, maybe you do have a use for a desktop environment. Now, if you haven't used GNOME before, when you first check it out, it might seem a little weird to you. You don't have a panel or a taskbar or anything like that, but you do have this little activities overview button here at the upper left. If you click on it, you get what's called the activities overview. And here on the left, we have the closest thing to a panel that we have in the GNOME environment. Other desktop environments out there will have a more traditional layout, which may include a panel at the bottom of the screen. The applications that you see here on the left, those are actually favorites. That does not represent all of the applications installed on the CentOS system. To see all of the applications, you can click on this button right here, Show Applications. Now here we see all of the applications that are installed on our CentOS installation. We also have a list of frequent apps right here, which will show all of the applications that you use the most often. Now already, we can see that there are some very useful applications installed here. For example, we have the Firefox web browser. Files, also known as Nautilus, is a file manager. It'll show you what is on your server or desktop when it comes to, well, files. Cheese is a webcam application. So if I click on that, you'll see that it actually activates my webcam. I have that up on the screen right now. So I guess by default we get a webcam app as well. Moving on from there, perhaps even more interesting is Boxes. Basically it's a front end to Linux virtualization, something we might get into in a future video. But Boxes greatly simplifies the process of installing virtual machines. And some Linux distributions can actually have an automated install which makes it even easier. And then we also have software right here, which is what we'll use to install new packages, at least if we want to do so with a graphical utility. Now, if you click on an application, it'll open immediately. So now I have the file manager open and we have a close button right here. We can move it around. We can double click on a folder to go inside of it. We can right click to create a new folder. So test. I created a new folder. You can also right click if you want to open the folder in a terminal. For all intents and purposes, it is your average file manager. Now notice that there is no minimize button, at least not by default. It's strongly encouraged in GNOME that each application will have its own workspace. So if I press the Windows key or Super key, depending on what you decide to call it, it brings us back to the activities overview. And I can, for example, I'll just open a terminal. I can open another application. Let me make it smaller here. 
And now I have two applications open here. If I press the super key again, it basically overlays all of the applications that are open. Now, it's, like I mentioned, encouraged to have each app on their own workspace. What do I mean by workspace? So here on the right, we have two workspaces here. The one we are on is outlined, and then we have an empty one below it. And if I click on it, it'll take me to that empty workspace. In the activities overview, I can launch another application. So for example, Firefox. And here we have the Firefox web browser. If you've ever used Firefox before, well, you know what to expect. But now we have our browsing happening on one workspace. And then we have some utilities here on the first workspace. That's basically the main benefit of workspaces in general, is that you can split your applications into different subjects. So for example, here I have, like I mentioned, utilities. And then if I go back to activities overview, I can switch back to the browser. To make things even easier, you can hold down the super key and press page up to go one workspace up. And then you can hold super and press page down to go down a workspace so you don't actually have to go into the activities overview in order to switch between them. Now I'm going to open another file manager window here. You click on it, it'll just bring you to the one that you already had open if you do have it open already. But you can then right click instead and do new window. And now I have another file manager window. And what I like about activities is that if you press the super key, you see all the applications that are open, like I mentioned, which is especially useful if you have a window hidden behind another window. So where'd my file manager go? Well, there it is. And that can be incredibly useful. I mentioned that there is no minimize button by default. You can still right click on the title bar of an application and click minimize and it goes away. But where did it go? If you paid attention to the animation, it should be clear actually where it went. The animation showed it basically falling or sliding into the word activities. So if you click on activities or press the super key, well, here's the application. Minimizing it just basically sends it to the activities overview or basically in the background. Now the application is, well, out of our face and we can just work on this one right here. And to bring it back, hit the super key, You'll see all of your applications here, including the ones that you put in the background or minimized. This video is proudly sponsored by Linode. I've trusted Linode for over two and a half years as my infrastructure provider. Along the way, I've used them for all sorts of things, like my web server, for example. The wiki for this YouTube channel is also hosted on it. And I also use it for quite a few of the tutorials that you've enjoyed on my channel recently. I recommend Linode because it's simple to use, has affordable capped pricing that just makes sense, and reliable 24 by 7 support available by phone or support ticket. If you're a Linux power user, your server customization options are all but limitless. Even if you are just starting to learn, you can use Linode's growing list of one-click installations to easily get a site, app, or service up and running in the cloud. To get $20 in credit toward your new Linode account, use promo code LearnLinux19 at sign up, or just visit the URL that you see on your screen right now. I'd like to give a special thank you to Linode for their support of my channel definitely go ahead and check them out. And now let's get back to the video. Now, I've already discussed how to browse applications that are already installed. So then you might ask, what is the process for installing new applications? There's two ways of actually adding applications. There's the concept of package management, which refers to installing packages via the command line, something we'll get into later. There's also a graphical utility, which is called GNOME Software, or more simply, Software. I'll click on that. And here we have the actual utility we can use to install new applications. I'll click Let's Go Shopping. And we have some default categories here. So for example, I'll click on Developer Tools. You can see that we have a few here. So if I wanted to install Idle 3 for Python development, I'll click on that. Click Install.
And there we go, the application is installed, couldn't be easier. So I'll click on launch. And now the application that we just installed is up on our screen, so that works just fine. Similarly, we can click on remove and that will make the application go away. So I'll do that now. And when you do package management, it'll often ask you for your password. And that's totally fine. That It just wants to make sure that you are authorized to do this, which I am. So I'll put in my password. And the application goes away. Now back here on the main screen, we also have a section for installed. And we can see all of the applications that we have installed currently. So if this was an actual server, Maybe we don't want Firefox, or more importantly, we probably don't want a webcam utility. I'll click Remove. And you can just go through this list of applications here. If it has a Remove button on the right, that means that it is installed and you can remove it, so you can prune the list of installed apps if you'd like. Now, that was just a quick overview of the default GNOME desktop, which serves as the desktop environment or graphical user interface for CentOS. In the next video, we're going to take a look at file management, and we are also going to start getting into the command line as well. So I'll see you there.